Welcome to Positive Filter with your host, Philip Wilkerson, a podcast that focuses on friends, family, health, and career with a little self-help along the way. Please join me in this journey for self-improvement, and I hope what I have to share will make you a better person, thus making the world a better place. I hope you enjoy the show. about half an hour okay. uh, i'll have to turn that part out <laughs> hello hello uh people of the world is philip wilkerson back with another episode of positive filter i'm joined by a special guest everyone's a special guest because they take their time to join me for their show now as you know sometimes i meet my guests for the first time doing this podcast and i'm really astounded by this leader in career planning because i work in career development uh the good doctor like i say the good doctor Chaz austin um, but before we get into this dialogue uh Dr. Austin, can you share a little bit about who you are? And then we'll have this dialogue about careers and career planning and, and the like. Let's see. Uh, the way I brand myself is that I train people to self-market for the gig economy, which is where we're going, whether that's right or wrong, that's the direction we're going in. Um, I'll always have work. People don't know how to do this. We were never trained to do this. We were trained to be good boys and girls, get an education, have a good resume, know how to interview uh, and find a job. Well, the jobs are going away. It's a freelance world. So this is a whole new skill set, uh, which is uh, how do I market myself? Uh, excuse me. Uh, what, what? I have a brand. What? what? <laughs> this is and it's, it's like pulling teeth trying to train people how to do this. And I've worked with people from ages 14 to 84. Um, and in every industry you could imagine, and no one quite knows how to do this. Um, so that's, that's what I do. My work is available um, online on my, on my LinkedIn page, on my website, chazaustin.com. Uh, I have a, a TEDx talk. I have three courses on LinkedIn learning. I have two books with a third one coming out soon uh, on how to do all this. And I also teach um, in person and on Zoom uh, to explain and train people how to do all this. I love it. So like, how did that mean, you know, obviously as I navigate the the career development space and we call, you know, we, we coded something else, you know, we think of like marketing yourself does take aspects of, of your resume. That's technically a, a tool to market yourself, your LinkedIn. Um, and, but not, and then doing that, you know, when you do informational interviews, you're, you're hyping yourself up, but like no one, I've always thought about that too, with students thinking about, but you're also a personal brand. You think about the corporations and the organizations on a large scale, they, they market themselves and we're doing that day to day. How did, how did you come to start studying this and teaching the personal brand thought, you know, and how each person is marketing themselves at all times? Um, I start at the end with Muhammad Ali's quote, service is the rent we pay for our room here on earth. That's not the hook. The hook is the money because that's what gets people interested. But underneath that, between you and me and all your listeners, is service, service and contribution, that everyone has a particular brand, a uh, set of skills and talents that, that no one else in the world has. I've, I've worked with thousands of people in my career and nobody's got the same brand. So what is it you offer that people will pay for to make the world a better place, to make your industry better, uh, to improve people's lives? And that's the focus. Um, and what's critical to that is understanding uh, your target market. Who's your audience? Who can use what you got? Who will pay for it? Because we're I'm I, I'm uh, I've got about thirty five thousand followers on LinkedIn, but I so I'm I'm a big believer in in social media now, but um, a, a, in finding work. Uh, but we're not looking for fans, as I tell my private clients. We're looking for money. So who's going who's gonna to pay you for what you got? How do you keep upskilling um, so that you're always offering more to people who say, I can use that? That would, that would help me in my business and my enterprise. I love that. It's like upskilling and what do I, you know, looking for the money. You know, when is it, when is it tip over the things you'd like to do naturally turn into things that you get for money? So for instance, 
you know, most recently I'm starting to dive into public speaking. I was just talk for free. I was doing this for free all the time. I'll talk to kids, you know, in higher ed, I work, you know, do workshops and panels. And then I realized, wow, I'm investing more time. When does it tip over to say, well, you know, someone's going to actually pay for me, you know, pay this for me. Like, how do you, how do you coach someone to say, take something that you're really good at and find ways to get money for that? That's, that's really a, a challenge for a lot of people is uh, they're naturally good in their upskilling, but they don't, I guess, turn into look for the money wise. We, we live under capitalism. Um, you have to pay your bills. Um, and you have to have a sense that what you offer has value to people and you're networking presumably with colleagues who will tell you what a good starting point is to offer your services, what people will pay for, for what you specifically do. Um, and understand that that's one of the rewards um, in doing the work you do, that you get paid presumably well for it. Um, and the other rewards are that you make to, uh, you get to make a very positive impact on the people that you interface with, that you make a difference in their lives. It, your life has meaning and value to people, that you are, again, making the world a better place um, and improving things for people. And that's, that's a career, is that you, you make a lot of money um, and you do work that you love that uh, helps people. And I, I've frankly had that over and over again, fortunately, in my life and the work I do. And it, it's a reason to get up in the morning because the money ain't enough. Um, there's got to be a purpose behind all this um, and a reason to get up in the morning and do what you have to do and go through all the stuff you have to d get through, all the logistics and so on. Um, but it's worth it because uh, you, because I, I, my, my life has a purpose and meaning, and I, I want that for all the students and, and private clients that I work with. I'm very interested about when someone is working on their brand in later years. You said you had some clients in their 80s and clients, you know, obviously post-retirement. Can you talk about the scenario when they probably need that revamp on personal brand? Is it like encore jobs or like, what do I do next with my career? Like, when you start working with clients in that age group, what, why? What are they? What kind of motivations do they have? Um, I, I have a colleague, uh, Joy Schwartz, who who coined a term called re-careering. So I, I stay away from the concept and have my clients stay away from the concept of retiring. No, you're going into a new career, and maybe now uh, you've gotten to a point in your in your prior career or present career where you now have the financial freedom to do what you've always dreamed of doing. I always wanted to do X, but I, because of family matters and, and responsibilities and kids and so on, I never could. Now I can. So it's a new career for me. Um, so how that looks, again, it's all, it's all individualized by, in terms of the client. Um, some people want to work part-time. Some people want to volunteer. Some people want to continue working and have enough money. And what I tell them, which may seem a little odd, uh, is go buy yourself a job. And the answer is, excuse me, you have money. Invest in a company and give yourself a title, executive vice president, and you have a new career doing something you always wanted to do, um, presumably. We're doing the next thing. I mean, we have multiple careers. Our parents and grandparents didn't have that luxury. For right. us, after five, 10 years, you get bored. I'm going to do something else. Or the industry changes and you have to do something else. So uh, if you're staying healthy and taking care of yourself uh, and treating the, the old line from a TV show called Laverne and Shirley, you're treating your body uh, like a temple, not an amusement park. Um you and you're, you've been taking care of yourself and you're in good shape physically and mentally, you can still contribute to the greater good and uh, in, a, in a more senior capacity. That's, that's when you can become a consultant because people will value and pay for all your years of experience, which, which in your 20s you didn't have, but you do now. So you make it work if it's part-time, if it's volunteer, whatever it is, um, so that you're still doing good work. I love it. I mean, I'm thinking about that. I think this is maybe the topic where I, I love it, like career planning for the career planning for the re-careering. Because I, 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 that was the first time I heard that. And I think this is actually a, probably in this gig economy, probably even bigger. Have, have you noticed because of the economy and the money, that people are need, needing to re-career more often to stay afloat. Like, you know, like they can't just not do anything that they need to have a, 
I guess, an encore career or continue to work later on in life or work longer. We're living longer. They have to work longer. Is, yeah. Is that I, I, have a, I have a friend who said, I plan to retire five years after I die. People, people can't afford it. In many cases, they have to keep working. Um, if you're fortunate enough to have built up enough of a nest egg, you can perhaps do it part time. Um, but you, you have to continue working. Um, and it's a good thing in a way, because you still have a lot to give. Um, and the financial, unfortunately for everybody, uh, the financial uh, problems or issues or challenges um, force you to keep working. So you need to stay healthy. <laughs> I like it. And then I was thinking, going back to it, it's like, do you realize, is there more resistance about their brand development later in life or it's probably easier because they're more firm in who they are. You know, like you think, when I think of personal brand, I always do like a little exercise, like what are your top three values and what do you care about? And I would assume that someone that's more seasoned in life or more firm in what they're valued, right? Like I know, I've seen the world, I know what I value more. So I can really align that with my personal brand or have you found a little bit more challenges? Good point. Millennials are accused of, uh, I deserve this, but I find that the most difficult people to work with are baby boomers because they truly believe they deserve it. I've worked my whole life. I deserve a job. Yeah, I uh, No, you don't deserve anything. Um, sorry to tell you the hard truth. Um, they're very resistant. Baby boomers, very resistant to change. This is the way it's always been. I have enough of a track record built up. Give, where's my job? Give me a job. I should not have to do this. I had a nurse once I worked with. She'd been a nurse for 40 years. They closed the hospital. I said, you're going to have to do a little marketing. She said, I shouldn't have to. I'm a nurse. I just want to be a nurse. Well, everyone has two jobs now. One is their job, and the other one is constantly marketing themselves and branding and rebranding and upskilling um, so they can get to the next level in their career or start a new one. If that's what's necessary, a lot of a lot of fields are going out. There just are no jobs in those fields. You're going to have to shift focus and learn what you have to learn and get whatever certificates or degrees or licenses so you can go to the next phase. And it's a, it's a new challenge. Keeps you young. You I was know? about to say, I love the upskilling saying, what are some challenges like finance, uh, not financial, like digital literacy? Is it like, oh, it's, I, 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 I shut up. I love my mother-in-law. But she probably won't hear this later down. But my mother-in-law, she grumbles. She hates the technology, man. She like, yeah. she smacked the computer. I was like, that's a stupid machine. You know what I'm saying? And like, but you got to keep it up because billing, she's, you know, the things that she's working, billing is going electronic. She's going to have to, you know, do things electronically and bill electronically and not fax things anymore. So what's some thoughts uh, on executing? Uh, uh, so to your mother-in-law, I say, too bad. Sorry. <laughs> This is the way it's going, and you need to stop resisting. Um, my wife gave me a term, digital immigrants and digital natives. Digital natives are the people who grew up with this stuff. It's second nature to them. In the womb, there was a, a, an umbilical cord and a phone charger. <laughs> this, is, this is what they know. And, and digital immigrants are people who've had to learn it after and uh, when they were grown. And it, they'll never be as good at it as, as younger people, but it's a necessary skill. You just, it's like, if you live in Chicago, you need a winter coat. I don't care, I'm this tough love. I don't care if you like it, you're gonna freeze to death if you don't have one. If you live in LA, you probably need to drive a car to get around. Because we have, we have, I'm in LA, we have terrible, we're trying, but we have terrible public transportation. So you have to drive a car. This is what's necessary. You want to keep working. You have to be good at computers. You have to be good with apps. You have to be good with social media. There's no discussion on that. You want a job. That's what, that's what it's going to take. You want to work. That's what it's going to take. Otherwise, you're going to deal with, you're dealing with millennials and, and Gen Zers and, and Gen X people who are going, I can't, I can't hire my grandma. She doesn't get it. So it's it's tough enough that you're older, but if you're not up to date with technology, you've shot yourself in the foot and you will not get work. That's just how it is. And I tell people, I don't care if you like it, you just have to do it. That's yeah. all. This what, isn't would, what, would some, yeah, what would be some strategies for that dem digital immigrant? I mean, I think it seems very daunting and it's, um, it's probably harder, you know, because 
you know, you have to like put yourself out there. It's more, un- it's more uncomfortable, I guess, but what was some, tra- what's some strategies to do um, this? The, the strategy is you have to write down whether it's on a computer screen or on paper, what's, what's missing. Uh, what, what skills do you need to have to stay competitive to keep getting work? And if you write it down, you get it out of your head. This is what I need to do. I need to get better with Microsoft Office. I need to learn these particular programs and apps uh, that are specific to my field in order to be competitive, in order to get work. Because that's the first question I'm going to ask. Do you know X program? Uh, No, I've never heard of it. Well, thanks, Grandma. I'll have a nice life, but I couldn't possibly hire you. Yes, not only do I know the program, I have a certificate. And I've been teaching it. Oh, good. Okay, so we can use you and your age is not so relevant. Um, So it's like pulling teeth. They don't want to. I don't care. You want to work? This is what you have to do. Um, And it's after a while, they still don't like it, but they realize that's what they have to do. And they start. And if there's enough of a commitment They'll do it. There's a wonderful term I use, which is actions consistent with your commitment. Meaning you can say one thing, but it's what you do that matters. So yeah, yeah, I'm going to learn this stuff. Yeah, yeah. But if you don't, you're not committed to it. It's not going to happen. That's that's what makes all the difference. And it's not for me as their coach. Um, it's for them. You want to move forward. This is what you're going to have to learn. It's uncomfortable. You won't like it. I don't care. I want you working. And I want you fulfilling whatever it is you want in your life and being self-actualized and and being able to contribute. I love that. I mean, I think I'm always looking at the strengths-based approach, you know, thinking about, um, you know, combating ageism, regardless of the the digital immigrant. You know, I think one of the things when you think about just immigrants in general is the innate sense of resiliency, right? Like, could you imagine going to another country and, and, and you had to be incredibly resilient to 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 survive in a new country so that's the resiliency of that's the positive when i see immigrants is that resiliency what are some of the positives that you see for the re re careers that and let me phrase the late re careers that you think is a tremendous benefit i think you spoke to it earlier regards to consulting but what are some other tremendous assets that they bring to the table um being a re career and regardless of technology they're bringing something to the workforce that should be you know uh, valued. They're, they're bringing patience. They're bringing experience. They're bringing a, a coolness under fire where not everything's a big drama. Yes, I've been there. I've seen it before. We can handle it. It's just a problem. So it takes a lot of the drama out of things and you, you become a, a sort of the calm center where all the little children are running around. Oh my God. Oh my God. It's not, oh my God. It's just another problem. Yeah. Now, to, to my, my mind, and I have a doctorate in organizational leadership, managers identify and solve problems. Unknown caller. Right. Managers identify and solve problems. That's what managers do. That's my definition of management. Yes. So it's not that big a deal. Unless you work in an ER, no one's going to die. It's just a problem. So as someone who's experienced, someone who's older, someone who has a work history, Um, you bring that to the table. And of course, you have good computer skills and good social media skills. So so you understand how to communicate with younger people and with a younger audience and and more and more younger audience. Yeah, the old folks are dying off, uh, but you still have a lot to give. And if if the people who are going to hire you understand that, that's a real gift you're giving them, even if you're only working for them part time. It's something that they need. It's something rock steady. Um, that will help stabilize an organization. I love that. So do you ever feel like you have to like coach them on that? Like get them out of their, I guess, get people that are re-careers out of the self-loathing and help them see their strengths more often? Or they, like you said, maybe it's the opposite. They already think they got all these strengths and you need to sometimes humble them more often. Which one do you think you see more often? Uplifting people are humbling them more often. I don't know. You know just a little, this is the anecdotal question. This is from your experience. That's all. Um, uh, so more often, whether I see people uh, on one side of the line in terms of technology or the other, is that what you're saying? No, I'm saying more so like the re-careers. I, I love this talk about re-careers and people late in their career. Do you see like more often that you have to build them up and, and talk about, wow, you really have all these skills and patience, coolness under fire experience, or the opposite, like 
as you said, I gotta, they got to humble them more often. Like, no, you don't have these, ex- like nothing is given to you because of your world of work and experience. You need to, you know, like you yeah. said, that technology, like, do you need to humble them or uplift them more often? You know, like. It's a good question. It's both. Okay. It's, it's, it's grounded coaching. So you're, you're, you, you may be a consultant in the manufacturing field. Um, so let's get honest about this. You're not the greatest coach in the manufacturing field that's ever lived, okay? But you do have specific things to offer. So it's, it's, it's two things at once. On the one hand, a grounded sense of what they offer. These are specific things. You've written them down that you have. This is what you can deliver people will pay for. That's one, period. Now, let's look at what's missing to make you more attractive and have you be paid better. So, uh, and if you're older, it's probably your social media and computer skills. And they're resistant. And okay, so we need to build that up. You want to work? Yes, good. So you need to learn this. Every, millions of people have, so can you, yeah? You're not that special. You're not that dumb. You can figure it out. You do it over and over again, you'll get good. You don't have to be a genius at it, but good enough so that you can communicate with younger people you're going to be working with um, and understand that. And always know there's going to be something missing. And you're always you're it's always it's a constant learning um, on technology because it changes almost daily. (laughs) Really, it's frightening, but you don't have to be great at it, but good enough so that uh you're comfortable with it and other people are comfortable working with you that way. So yeah, it's, it's both. It's both. I was thinking, um, and what about the spaces where, like you said, the world of work is changing and we're going more expansive into a gig economy. Is there been a lot of struggles like who's keep, who's adapt and amp to really take full advantage of this gig economy or, are you seeing like particularly more challenges for this re-career generation, boomer generation with this gig economy transition? The challenges are enormous if we're young um, because of costs, because how I, I just read a piece in the New York Times about how Gen Zers cannot afford ever to have a home, yes. to own a house, ever. So they're, they're living in, in really tough conditions living with their parents, living with roommates, living in tiny places. And the dream of home ownership is gone for so many of them, sadly. Um, so this is where my philosophy, so to speak, um, of understanding your brand and building the brand um, will allow you to have clients rather than a boss in a job since the jobs are going away. And you've always got an income and you're always hustling. So both at the same time, always hustling for work and there's always money coming in. You're never unemployed, but um, you're constantly marketing yourself to people who would pay you uh, for what you what you can offer them in your industry. I think this is the new way to go um, until hopefully the, the union movement grows and people can be protected at jobs. But then again, if there's no jobs, being protected at a job is kind of ridiculous. Um, so I think both need to both need to happen. I'm, I'm very encouraged by the work of unions because that's your only power in a capitalistic system. It's all rigged toward the employer. And the only defense regular folks have is, is with a union and temporarily, and this may be for the next 30 or 40 years, the, the model that I've created uh, where you have a brand and you're uh, hustling and marketing yourself in the gig economy. Yeah. I was thinking um, the home ownership really struck because, you know, I, you know, we're very fortunate. I think it was a kind of an alley-oop that uh, our first home was supported by our, our parents, right? They saved money uh, when we got married and they helped us and then we were able to keep up and, and just continuously so that generational thing and coming into that. So I think I think about that. That's really that really kind of struck home about the the generation, the kids, my kids coming up. What's what you know, maybe that's the, the best tool that the ones that actually have a house can really pass on is that opportunity for ownership to the next generation because it's gonna be very hard and difficult for the next generation. So like ways that parents can think about how they pass that, like that's the thing you can pass on those assets that 
that that land, you know, that's generational wealth. Cause yeah, they, for them to do it on their own. These are the tough times. It, it was America was supposed to be about every generation does better than the one before it, and we've gone backwards. Um, so younger people, a lot of whom I work with, I just finished working with some high school, well, high school graduates who are entering a place I've been teaching at for six years, uh, Los Angeles Pierce College. Um, and they, it's tough. I taught them a course in financial literacy, um, and which they didn't get in high school, unfortunately, um, to understand the pitfalls and, and what's going on so they can be smart about this and not get into credit card debt, et cetera, et cetera, and understand how things work. Um, but these are tough times. And I think what I do arms people for not what used to be or what they want things to be, but the way things actually are and will be for presumably in the near future um, so that they have a fighting chance. Um, but it's, it's, it's tough for them. I feel, I feel badly for them. At the same time, I'm, I say I'm glad I'm old. Well, I think I, yeah, I get that too. And maybe, I don't know, maybe in an optimistic way, it's like stock where like maybe that generation has it really hard. And the one after them gets it, like it goes back up for the, you know, like they're just unfortunately sandwiched in between a tough spot. But the generation after that, maybe their kids are got in this better space or they figured it out or, you know, I don't know that maybe I'll be gone by then. I don't know. <laughs> like, yeah, I I'm, 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 I'm here to help people are lost Every generation lost what's going on. Everything's changed. This isn't, the, the rules are all different. I, I say they, they move the goalposts, but nobody told you. Um, so the rules changed and they're, and they're lost. And I help them get grounded into, no, these are the new rules. This is the future. You're not going to like a, a, a lot about what I'm telling you, but I will give you new hope and new possibility. Um, and new opportunities that you can create for yourself so that you can navigate something that's entirely new that we never planned on before and didn't even know was going to happen. And, oh, my God, what do I do? Calm down. Take a deep breath. I'll help you through it. And I've done this so many times for so many people. It works. And, you know, what they're faced with is constantly the self-marketing. But after a while, you kind of get used to it and you don't have to love it, but you embrace it because you're doing good for other people. Um, so I, I, I tell my, my clients, you don't have to be great at it, just good enough to keep getting work. And then after a while things start to turn and they call you because you've got, you built up a reputation and you got referred and recommended by people they trust. And I, are you available? Yes, I am. I, I, I tell my people who aren't working, you're not unemployed, you're available. Um, and they start to uh, learn to live with it. I don't like it, but you know what? This is the way to go. Thank you for thank you for your help. And you know, I'm here if you if you need more coaching. So I'll, I'll work with people, and then we'll do a a meeting once a month just for a pep talk, and maybe tweak things a little in terms of their marketing effort and so on. But it's a whole new skill set. But what I tell them is, you learn to use a smartphone, which the, the iPhone was introduced in 2007. It's only 16 years old. Yeah. You learn to use a smartphone. You could learn to self-market. <laughs> New tool. I love it. One of my thoughts, and I think we're going into a good segment, is called Shot for Shot. And I, I would love to stay in touch. We'll be engaged. You're, you're now part of the, the Positive Filter alumni group where I stay, yes. all my, I stay in touch with all my past guests and I've got their emails and I love to communicate. But you know, this is the part of the show called Shot for Shot, where you get to ask me any random question. I ask you any random question just off the top of the head. You want to go first, I go first. You go first. What was one of the most creative re-career jobs that you encountered? Like someone said they always wanted to do something. And it was just super, super dope, but they did it later in life. One of, huh. it, it's very subjective, but like for you, you thought that was the coolest thing. And very yeah, I, I, yeah, one good story comes to mind. There are many, but one comes to mind. Uh, I had a student a few years ago who had been a video editor uh, for many years, very successful, and he got a little older and the calls stopped coming for his work. Part of it was he was older because there's that, there's ageism, certainly. Um, but the other part of it was that uh, the technology changed and people could afford to uh, buy video equipment at very low prices and do it themselves. So they didn't need them. 
So he said, I can't get work anymore. What do I do? I said, what else are you doing? He said, well, I, I'm, I run a nonprofit. Um, and I said, focus on that. And he did. And he, he's got a whole new life. And the nonprofit does utilize some of his video skills where he, he videos people talking about themselves. Um, so he created a whole new life for himself. I have, I have a, 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 another uh, student of mine, actually, um, who wanted to be a college professor. I said, they're not, tenure is going away. You under, have to understand the marketplace. Okay. What else you got? Um, and he said, well, I have this, is this something called the Haitian Film Festival. He's from Haiti. And he's, I see him posting all the time on Facebook. He's just going gangbusters with that. Um, and creating product and showing it all over the world at film festivals and getting awards and so on. So they have a whole new life. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's a couple of examples of, of good recareering. I love it. Okay. What's your question for me? <sighs> what do you see? What do you see uh, the short term future in the workplace? Uh, what, what do you, what do you think is going to happen? Uh, in the next year or two. Um, okay. Yeah, that's very interesting. I mean, I work at career services right now. Um, and so I see a lot of the regional aspect of it. You know, I think there's going to be a rise in non-traditional learning. There's going to be also a rise in, um, like you just said, certificates and boot camp style learning where like, I don't need a full degree. Let me just get this UX design, <laughs> get this, you know, security plus this IT certificate where, the university or the universities don't tap into that and offer some kind of like partnership and higher ed is going to go out, right? They're going to be like, I don't need to go to college. I just, you know, need to pay this, you know, maybe one grand, two grand and get it on my own and then just start working and promote themselves. I mean, we also see a lot of organizations doing it and marketing and like, I say scapegoating, but like branding themselves, like the Google cloud certificate so learn our google stuff the amazon like they're all saying like and these are the ones that you know if you get the certificates with our stuff and so then we'll hire you um and so i think the yeah i do it i join in i got i did one of the i'm working on a free one right now i'm working on the uf design one just because like you said upscaling like i don't know if i'll need it but i was interested in it and learning a little bit about website and app development just that have it you know like I, I have a podcast but i was thinking like Maybe just having that in my tool belt, whether I need it or not, I can be, you know, adaptable. So I think that's going to be the rise of work is like. Good, good point. Like, good point. Uh, have to jump in yeah. on good point. Uh, yes. Um, I, I have three degrees, bachelor's, master's and a doctorate. And it sounds strange, but I, I always caution my, my students and clients don't get overeducated. If you want to be a car mechanic, you do not need a bachelor's degree. You need certificates or, or a master certificate in car repair or knowing how to do fuel injection or knowing uh, how to repair e-cars. Yes, because the people who would hire you, that's what they're interested in. That's nice you have a bachelor's. If you have a, a, an extra 50 grand lying around in the future, go ahead and get a, a bachelor's. But you can't monetize that. So you need to have your education um, focused on what's going to get you work. And if it's a certificate, get that. Because people will say, do you have that certificate? Yes. And I also have, I don't care what you also have. I care that you have that certificate because if you have that certificate, we can hire you. Can you start Monday? Good. We're good to go. Yeah. So I, yeah, that uh, great point you make that, that uh, I think you need to customize the education for the workplace. Yes. Yeah. And also just be able to like, you're going to, the enrollment cliff is real. They like always talk about enrollment cliff. Less people are going to enroll in traditional higher ed. So the, they're going to have, they're going to actually go back after a long, they're going to go back after like, Oh, you know, just add this on, you know, you've got a job, you're happily employed, but add this skill, this certificate afterwards, you're going to see that you're going to see a rise in that learning uh, for sure. So, uh, unfortunately, the uh, traditional academia looks down on vocational education. We don't do that. Um, and I say you can do both. Um, that you can, if, if your focus is on contribution, you can train your people. And this is my, my first book and my, my doctoral dissertation was about this, where you train people how to market in college. 
So it's not one or the other. It's not either academia or vocational. It's both. Don't resist it. But plus, it's it's good brand for the college or university because the parents will go, you got my kid a job. I like that. Well, let's give you some money. And my next kid's going to come to your college, too, yeah. because I have a return on my investment, uh, which a lot of colleges just don't do. They Here's your piece of paper. Good luck to you. And that's insufficient in the 21st century. Yeah. Well, this has been great, a really robust conversation. I really learned a lot, took some notes. And I think this will also, as someone that's a career professional, I like that term. I'm going to use that. I'm never going to say retired. I'm going to say re-careering because we're always, I, I've even seen people still working forever. So I love that idea. And it's a different way. It's not like labor work, but it's just you're involved in something that gives you purpose every day. So it's work, you know, passionate work. So this has been a great uh, episode. Um, Dr. Austin, can you just share you know, shout outs and plugs, uh, people you want to show love to, whoever you want to show love to, and then ways the listeners can engage with you, connect with you, what you're working on. I'll make sure to put those in the show notes. Um, best way to contact me is through my LinkedIn page, Dr. Chaz Austin, C-H-A-Z, like in Zebra, Austin, like the capital of Texas. And everything's there. Uh, my links to my courses, my books, my TEDx talk, things I post, things I've written, et cetera, et cetera, and ways to get a hold of me. Um, so that's that's the portal to me. <laughs> and then the shout outs. Anyone you want to show some love to, partners, collaborators, anything? Um, no, I'm good. All I'm right. Good. Okay. All right. They know who they are. They know who they are. You got mad people. You got a lot of people you can show love to. Well. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. I think this has been great. And we'll stay engaged, as you know, like once you're uh, you're in the in alumni group of all my my past list, uh, past guests, um, Positive Filter listeners, please check out this wonderful episode and follow up with Dr. Austin and all his wonderful resources. I'm actually going to plug into his LinkedIn course right now, Planning Your Career, just because I like LinkedIn learning courses. So that's pretty dope. Uh, maybe that's something I'll aspire to do myself one day. Um, as you know, every episode is dedicated to the memory of my late father-in-law, Jeff Kirsch. So please consider donating to the Jeff Kirsch Anti-Hunger Fund for all his work that he did fighting food insecurity during his career, as well as health care. Um, share, like, subscribe, leave a rating or review on Apple or Spotify. It helps elevate the podcast. Thank you so much for your support. And we're out. Thank you for listening to Positive Filter, a podcast that focuses on family, friends, career with a little self-help along the way if you enjoyed this podcast please share it with your family and friends and like the facebook page spreading positivity of movement thanks for listening